The project came about because in recent years I've become more and more interested in historical dress and I've also become really interested in dress that's falling apart. So I became increasingly interested in how we might exhibit what is sometimes regarded as the unexhibitable. And the idea of showing material that was damaged or decayed or degraded beyond the point where it would be shown in a conventional exhibition, in a way that was the first challenge. But because that was challenging a convention immediately, it helped us then to start thinking about what are the other conventions of fashion exhibition making. And, and I think we got to a point where we were actually questioning those as well. So things as basic as you know, what is the function and relationship of text in an exhibition to the garments? How do you represent the body? And, and how do you organise the space? How do you contain the garments? So really the idea of these, these imperfect clothes was, was something that opened the door to questioning all kinds of issues around fashion exhibition making. Normally when you're looking for object, you perhaps start off with one core object and then you might look at other objects in relation to that object because what goes next to each other tells part of the story. Whereas apart from the initial reaction of me wanting historic women's wear and Jeff wanting contemporary men's wear, that didn't happen at all. So we've got two Stone Island jackets. We've got a dress from 1917 by the designer Redfern. We've got two burned gloves that are similar but not a pair. And Jeff found an absolutely wonderful prototype Alexander McQueen jacket, which is in the archive at Central St Martins, one of a number of archives in the university. I guess how we thought about the exhibition and how we put the exhibition together, because we used very playful processes. Mm. I, I worked with Amy on things like word association and word strings to generate the narratives. So it was, it was a, re a really enjoyable and very playful process. Each of the objects in the exhibition has a display on the wall adjacent to it. And at the center of that display, the focal point really, is the form that Amy and myself used to record our curatorial exhibition making sessions. And then from that central point, radiate a number of different narratives that relate to each garment. And of course, in an exhibition, you generally get one, one narrative around the garment, the narrative that fits the theme or yeah. the topic of that show. But here we've shown that one that we've privileged, but we've also then displayed a multitude of other narratives that we could possibly have followed up. And it means that if a visitor comes and they're particularly interested in one garment, you know, there's all sorts of evidence about it. And because we're based in a university, it shows the research processes. So it's also sort of like a methodology of of the process of making the exhibition. Um, we've presented it in a very informal way. We've got the photocopies of the research and we've fixed them to the wall with masking tape. And highlighted relevant passages with bright yellow highlighter in exactly the same way that you might highlight your personal research notes. So we're not trying to present it in any other way other than it being research. I could have talked for ages about the dress, I could have given the lecture, but actually what Jeff was asking me was to articulate one meaning that he could convey in the installation. And to start with, I was going to talk about absence and about absent bodies. And then I started thinking it's actually about time, it's about the passing of time. Um, it's about how time has seen the gradual deterioration of this garment. And then I started thinking about how do you evoke that? How do you say it quite simply? And I just thought about T.S. Eliot and that a lot of his poetry, which I'm interested in anyway, is about passing time. And I found two phrases that I absolutely loved. One was, um, for the roses had the look of flowers that are used to being looked at. And I thought that was really evocative because you could liken it to a woman wearing a dress that is special, made by, you know, one of London's top designers. And then I found another one about time and the fleeting nature of time, and we chose that. 
the poetry to me really echoed the, the poetic gaze that Amy has on the object. So it became really important about how we rendered that text in the exhibition. And of course there were lots of conventions where you could print it on a text panel, put it in vinyl on the wall. But I thought I felt that it needed a technique that was more poetic than that. And that what we did in the end was we, we had um, the graphic designer Julia design the text and we had it laser engraved from the acrylic that was the surface of the case. And then we edge lit the acrylic so that the text hovers above the garment and glows. It glows with light in a very, in a very poetic way. So you see that you see the T S Eliot quote, and you see the garment through it. So there's an immediate visual connection and as aesthetic connection between the text that sums up Amy's sense of the garment mm. and the garment itself. One of the things I found really interesting about the process that I came at the exhibition from the perspective of an exhibition maker. Amy came to it from the perspective as a curator. But actually, as we've gone through the process, we've, we've both worked across those disciplines. We've both really... Um, we've surprised ourselves. We have surprised <laughs> ourselves. There have been times when I've been very object-focused. There have been times when Amy's worked on the display and come up with display ideas. And I think we're working on another project at the moment. And I think one of the things that we've continued into that project is this fluidity of working. That I might define myself as an exhibition maker, Amy might define herself as a curator, but actually you can walk across those boundaries, whatever those boundaries are. You, we're making exhibitions and that's what we're doing. And that unlike writing a book, it is a team endeavour. And mm. it is a much more discursive process, yeah. which is thrilling. And it's through that discussion, I think, that you find that ability to challenge conventions and come up with new ideas. Mm.